Have you ever had trouble getting your video footage to look consistent across shoots? Even shoots in the same location with the same lighting setup and camera settings? I definitely have. In this tutorial, you'll discover how to nail your exposure every time so your video footage always looks well-balanced, consistent, and ready for color grading. I'm David Power, and this is a DaVinci Resolve Power Tip. Now, a lot of what I'll share in this tutorial is intended to apply to video footage shot in the Rec. 709 color space using a standard non-log gamma profile. Now, if that sentence sounded completely Greek, there's a very good chance everything in this video is applicable to you. However, even if you're shooting in a log profile such as C-log, V-log, F-log, or S-log, or a color space other than Rec. 709, you can still follow the instructions in this tutorial. Just be sure to check with your camera manufacturer because they may have recommendations that differ slightly from what I suggest. With those caveats out of the way, let's dive into step one, get everything right in camera. And yes, I say that mostly tongue in cheek because getting it right in camera could easily be its own dedicated tutorial. I won't spend a lot of time on the camera side of the equation in this video other than to say two important things. Number one, don't rely on your camera's auto white balance or auto exposure settings. You'll get far more consistent and reliable results when you set both your white balance and exposure manually. And number two, use a white and gray card every time you shoot. Here are a couple of tools that can help you nail white balance and exposure in camera. The first is the X-Rite Color Checker Passport Video, which I'm almost certain you've seen or heard other YouTubers talk about. It's a handy device because it's small and comes in a hard shell case, so you can throw it in a bag without damaging it. But at almost $150 US, it's on the expensive side. It's a useful piece of gear to own if you have the budget, but there are cheaper options. My personal favorite is this 12 inch reversible gray and white card. At the moment, it's only 750 USD on amazon.com and there's a link in the description if you're interested in checking it out. Aside from the budget price, what I like about this is the fact that it's collapsible, so it doesn't take up a lot of room when you're packing up gear. It's also bigger than the other tools, which is handy both when you're setting exposure in camera and when you're color correcting in post. And you'll see exactly what I mean by that in just a minute. Now, admittedly, this tool doesn't have the chromatic color and skin tone chips, but at $140 cheaper than the X-Rite color checker, you'll have to decide whether the extra money is worth it to you. Here's how I use this tool. There are three things I do at the beginning of every video. Number one, I clap my hands in front of my face to slate the video. I record my audio on a separate recorder, and while Resolve does a pretty good job at auto-syncing, Having the hand clap allows me to refine the synchronization later if I need to. Next, I flash a white card for a few seconds. Get the card as close as you can to your subject's face without offending them. Then do the same with a gray card for a couple of seconds. We'll record the white and gray cards because we'll use them to adjust exposure and white balance inside Resolve in a later step. But while the gray card is up, use that time to adjust your camera's exposure so the gray card reads just above 40% on your camera's histogram, waveform, or spot meter. Step two, adjust your white balance in post. Once you've imported your footage to your Resolve timeline, open the color tab, and the first thing we'll do is make sure our scopes are visible. We'll do that by clicking the scopes icon right here. Next, I'll detach the scopes so I have control over their size. And I'll select the waveform scope. Open the Options menu, select the RGB option, and make sure the Colorize checkbox is selected. Now, if you're not familiar with the Waveform Scope, here's the world's quickest Waveform tutorial. The Waveform gives us a view into the luma or light levels across the video frame. Unlike a histogram, the Waveform Trace tracks the objects in your video frame horizontally from left to right. If I line up the scope immediately below my video frame, you'll see there's a one-to-one -one relationship between the objects in the video and the traces on the scope. For instance, notice on the wall behind me on both sides, there are black acoustic panels. 
Because they're black, you'd expect them to appear in the shadow or lower part of the scope. And sure enough, here they are just above the zero mark on both the left and right sides of the waveform. Also, I'm wearing a mostly black t-shirt, and you can see that here in the center of the frame. You can tell from this rounded shape that the red, green, and blue traces in the center represent the skin on my neck and face. The height of the red trace in relation to the green and blue tells me the frame is a little on the warm side, and I most likely need to adjust the white balance. And immediately to the left and right of my face are these elevated red traces, representing the red acoustic panel immediately behind me. Hopefully that makes sense. Next, let's find the location in the clip where I flashed my white and gray cards. It doesn't matter which color you start with, I'll start with white. Notice here on the waveform, there's a bright horizontal trace just below the 896 line on the scope. Not surprisingly, that's my white card. Now, there are two things you'll notice about this trace. First of all, there's not just a single line, but three lines, one for each of the red, green, and blue color channels. For a pure white card, we shouldn't see a separation at all in these traces. When your white balance is perfect, the three traces line up, and all you can see is a single white line. And we'll make those adjustments in just a minute. The second thing I want to point out is that the three lines aren't perfectly horizontal. They're sloping upward from left to right. That's because my key light is on the right side of the frame. So the right side of the white card is reflecting more light than the left side. That makes the trace higher or brighter on the right. And because the light is falling off toward the left side of the frame, the trace on the waveform slopes off in that direction. So let's fix the white balance. This next technique is an optional step but to remove distractions and make it easier for us to focus on the white card, I'm going to isolate it with a power window. To do that, I'll select the power window icon here in the center of the color tab, choose the curve tool, and draw a sort of square box inside the black frame of the white card. Once I've closed the box, I'll select the highlight icon here in the upper left of the screen. And magically, the waveform now displays only a bright line across 512, which represents the 50% gray area on most of the screen. And the only other thing we can see are the three bars representing the section of the white card we just isolated. At this point, some video editors will simply hit the eyedropper tool, click on the white card, and be done with it. And when I do that, notice how the red, green, and blue traces line up perfectly, and we can see only a single white line. Now that's fine, but fixing white balance this way applies a single color temperature shift to the entire image. And as we're going to see in just a minute, that's not always what you want. So I'm going to reset this node and switch from the primary wheels to the primary bars view. Now you can use either the wheels or the bars to adjust white balance and exposure. They're essentially different methods of doing the same thing. For white balance purposes, I like to adjust a single color at a time, and I find that easier to do with the bars. Now let's look at our waveform. Notice how the red trace is a little higher than the others? That means the red needs to come down. Now, because the whites are in the highlights, and highlights map to the gain section of our controls, I'll grab the red bar under gain with my mouse and slowly drag it downward until the red trace lines up with the green. Okay, the three color traces are now starting to look more like a single white trace, and that's what we're going for. To my eye, the blue trace looks a little low, so again on the gain section, I'll grab the blue bar and drag it a little higher until it lines up with the green and red traces. That's starting to look almost perfect. I can see a little green poking out here on the right, so I'll grab the green bar and drag it down ever so slightly. And as soon as the three traces are lined up, your white balance is good. Now, depending on how close your white balance was in camera, your starting point might be a little more extreme than this example, in which case you might have to spend more time adjusting the bars. But even if it takes a little longer, my best advice is to make small, gradual adjustments until you get as close to a single white line as you possibly can. Now, our whites are looking good, but we're not done yet. Next, we're going to follow the same balancing process for our grays. So let's move the playhead to where I'm flashing the gray side of the card. And now you'll see the same three colored traces closer to the 512 mark on the scope. 
We'll do exactly the same thing here, except instead of adjusting the gain bars, we'll adjust the gamma bars. So the red trace is a little high, so I'll drag the red bar lower, and that's looking good already. The blues might be a little low, so I'll raise them just a bit, and I'll drag the greens down just a little bit as well. That's pretty much perfect. Okay, we're almost done with our overall white balance. But before we move on, let's hop back and double check our whites. Okay, notice how the whites have slipped out of sync just a little bit. That's because it's almost impossible to change the gamma controls without also impacting the gain at least a little bit. So this is very much a push-pull kind of exercise. I'll make a few small adjustments to the gain color bars until I see only a single white trace. And we'll pop back to the gray card. The gray is still looking pretty good. Make any small changes you think are necessary to the gamma color bars. And now they both look good. Okay, at this point, the whites and grays are well balanced. And if you're curious about how the blacks look, we can quickly drag our power window over the black acoustic panel on the left side of the frame. And there you go. Our blacks are represented by a single white trace near the bottom of the waveform. If they weren't, you'd simply adjust the lift color bars as needed until the red, green, and blue traces line up. Now that process took substantially more time than simply clicking the eyedropper tool, but it ensures our shadows, midtones, and whites are all neutral and have no big color cast. And that's not something you can get from the eyedropper tool. Okay, white balance is good. Let's move on to step three, adjust your exposure in post. If you exposed well in camera, there won't be a lot of work here. We'll start by moving our power window back to the center of the frame. And here we see the white card again. Now, as a general rule, a properly exposed white card should sit at approximately 80% on the waveform scope. There's no line at 80%, so we'll have to approximate it. We'll use the gain wheel to move the trace up or down as necessary until the highest point of the trace, in this case, the right side, looks like it's in the 80% territory. That looks good. Again, because my exposure was pretty good in camera, I don't have to make any big adjustments here. Just be aware, if your exposure is way off in camera and you have to make big luma shifts at this stage, you may lose your white balance. For example, if I had to move my gain slider a lot higher, notice how the red, green, and blue traces start to separate. If that happens to you, it's simply a matter of following the white balance process again and adjusting the color bars until the traces line up. Mine was pretty good to start with, so I'll move the trace back to the 80% mark. Next, we'll do the same for the gray card. Now, a calibrated 18% gray card should come in at about 40% on the waveform scope. Mine's a little high, so I'll drag the gamma slider to the left to lower the trace. Again here, we'll have to eyeball for 40%. You'll have to imagine a horizontal line a little higher than the 384 mark on the scope. In any case, there's no pressure to get it perfect. As long as you're in the ballpark, you'll be fine. So that's looking good right there. Let's hop back and check our whites again. That looks reasonably good. Our colors look like they moved around maybe a little bit. So I'll adjust the gain color bars to see if we can make the white trace a little sharper on the right. And that looks good. Now let's check our grays again. They still look fine. And just for kicks, let's check our blacks to see where they are. And the blacks look pretty good. There's a single trace and it's sitting just above zero. We could adjust the shadows just a little higher to give us some room for color grading. I'll slide the lift wheel to the right just a smidge, and that looks good. Now let's turn off the highlight, and turn off the power window, and move our playhead to a position where you can once again see my handsome face. And now let's do a before and after on our frame. Here's before and after. Before and after. Now, it should be obvious that the after or corrected version is noticeably darker than the version we started with. That's 100% okay. Remember, white balance and exposure are your first steps, not your final steps. I personally wouldn't publish something that looked this dull and uninteresting. 
But the whole point of this process, that is getting good, solid white balance and exposure levels, is to put your footage in a consistent, neutral place so you can start making creative adjustments. Things like refining skin tones or adding LUTs or putting a vignette around your subject. So if your video doesn't look finished at this point, that's okay. It's not supposed to. As long as your shadows, midtones, and highlights are white balanced, your white card is at 80% on the waveform scope, your gray card is at 40%, and your blacks or shadows are comfortably above zero, then your footage is exactly where it should be at this point. Once you've completed this process, I recommend you name your first node Balance, then add any additional nodes you need. In your subsequent nodes, you might make a creative choice to boost your highlights, increase your saturation. It's even common to make a conscious choice to change the white balance depending on whether you want your scene to feel warmer or cooler. Now, as is always the case with these tutorials, I'm not suggesting this is the best way or the only way to accomplish the task. I'm simply sharing my method, and hopefully you can use it as a jumping off point to finding a method that works best for you over the longer term. That's it for today. If you have questions, let me know in the comments. And if you're digging these power tips, you know what to do. Once again, I'm David Power, and I'll see you in the next power tip.